Do you want to live the abundant life? Deeper Life Bible Church invites you to our annual national convention beginning at 5 p.m. on Thursday, July 26th to Sunday, July 29th, 2018. The venue is Deeper Life Bible Church Convention Center in Kinston, North Carolina. The thief cometh not, but for to steal, kill, and destroy. But Christ has come to give you the abundant life. And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do. The theme this year is The Abundant Life. Ministering, Pastor W.F. Kumi, Pastor Michael Dada, and other anointed ministers of God. Also ministering is the Glorious Voices Choir of Deeper Life Bible Church. Come and experience God in the abundance of His power. Come and experience the abundant life. Are you there? Yeah. Alive? Yeah. Happy? Yeah. Strong? Yeah. Ah, then praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The Lord will lift you up today. Yeah. Give you vision. Yeah. Revelation. Yeah. And the person he wants you to reach that will make a difference in the kingdom of God I'll direct you to that person in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's pray together. Father, we bless your name for our training tonight. We bless your name for everything we've done already. Thank you for your sons and daughters, your servants and our leaders who are here tonight. We're asking, Lord, that you reach out to everyone. Open our eyes to see in Jesus' name. Amen. Reveal yourself more and more. Amen. I will pray, Lord, that our lives will count in the kingdom of God in Jesus' name. Amen. Nobody will be useless. Amen. Nobody will be worthless. Amen. Nobody will be without profit. Amen. Every one of us will profit the kingdom of God in Jesus' name. Amen. Let your hand be mighty upon every life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. You can sit down. Tonight we have looked at something special. Bringing the one next to you. We've sung it before. We've sung it tonight as well. And we've heard it before. But maybe we do not understand the power the potentials, the possibilities in reaching just one, one person. And tonight we're looking at the message, the extraordinary power of one, O-N-E, one. The extraordinary power of one, just one. The extraordinary power of one comma just one as we look at the scriptures we find that reaching just one or to rescue just one or to restore just one to disciple just one person to teach just one person to transform just one person and to pick just one person up and train just that one person. Equip and empower just one person. It's a great ministry. Effectively winning and effectively turning one person to Christ can lead to reaching and converting one family. Reaching one person for Christ can lead to reaching a whole household. Reaching one person, touching one person, turning one person around to serve the Lord may lead to reaching one whole community. Reaching one person, touching one person may lead to reaching a whole village, one whole village. Reach one person, touch one person, turn one person around you might discover that you reach one whole town eventually 
just one person like Jonah may reach one big city reach the one next to you and be steadfastly committed to fulfilling Christ's great commission look at some examples in 2 Kings chapter 5 2 Kings chapter 5 I read from verse 1 now Naaman's captain of the host of the king of Syria was a great man with his master and honorable because by him the Lord had given deliverance unto Syria he was also a mighty man in valor but tell me he was a leper great man a warrior yet a leper and the Syrians had gone out by companies and had brought again had brought away captive out of the land of Israel a little maid and she waited on Naaman's wife and she said unto her mistress would God my lord my master why will the prophet that is in Samaria for he would recover him of his leprosy and one went in underline that one went in somebody overheard that somebody heard what the maid had said and this one unidentified unnamed one went in and told his lord saying thus and thus said the maid that is of the land of israel because of that one that went to tell the maid, you know the ripple effect Naaman got to hear. Naaman got to the king. The king wrote a letter. And Naaman went to the prophet. Eventually, he was cleansed of the leprosy. And then in verse 14, then went he down and dipped himself seven times in Jordan according to the saying of the man of God and his flesh came again like unto the flesh of a little child and he was clean and he returned to the man of God he and all his company and came and stood before him and said behold now I know there is no God in all the earth all the idols and nothing that's a conviction now all the gods of all the nations even of his own nation he says they are nothing there's no god except in israel but in israel now therefore i pray thee take a blessing of thy servant just one mage talking about the power that is possible to cleanse the leprosy brought that a significant miracle that was eventually well known to that whole nation. We're coming to 1 Samuel chapter 17. 1 Samuel chapter 17. I'm reading here from verse 31. 1 Samuel chapter 17 verse 31. And when the words were heard which David spake, they rehearsed them before Saul and he said for him what had happened is there was a great uh, war a great battle and goliath was bragging give me one man and then i'll fight that man if he overcomes me then we're all your servants all the philistines if i overcome him then israel will be as servants everybody trembled then uh, David discussed or some and said, I can take on this man. I can conquer this man. And one person that heard about that went to Saul. And Saul heard about it. And that was what brought the defeat of Goliath. Look at verse 32. And David said to Saul, that is when he sent for him and somebody brought him let no man's heart fail because of him thy servant will go and fight 
with this Philistine. Just one sinner getting converted. What's the effect of that? Luke chapter 15. In Luke chapter 15, we're reading from verse 4, verse 7, verse 10. Luke chapter 15, reading from verse 4. What man of you, having an hundred sheep, if he lose one of them, just one, just one, does he not leave the ninety and nine in the wilderness and go after that which is lost until he find it? Verse 7. I say unto you that likewise joy shall be in heaven over how many sinners? One sinner that repented more than all the ninety and nine just persons which need no repentance. Heaven is paying attention. Heaven is looking. Just one sinner getting converted. The whole of heaven is rejoicing. You know, there are some people that feel just reaching one person, what's all that? Just touching one life, what's all that? And just bringing one person to Christ, what's the reward for that? The whole of heaven is rejoicing. Look at verse 10. Likewise I say unto you, there is joy in the presence of the angels over one sinner that repented. We're coming to John chapter 12. John chapter 12. The extraordinary power of one, just one, just one. We're looking at John chapter 12, verse 2. There the mage is supper, and master served, but Lazarus was one of them, just one, one of them that sat at the table with him. Look at verse 11. Because that, by reason of him, that just one person, one person, Lazarus, many of the Jews went away and believed on Jesus. Touch one life. Turn one life around. Impact one life and see what that life can become in the kingdom of God. Acts chapter 4, chapter 5, verse 34. Acts chapter 5, Verse 34, then stood there up one in the council, just one. The council wanted to destroy those apostles, kill those apostles, their nuisance. And they filled Jerusalem with their doctrine. We warned them, and they're still stubborn. And they say they're going to keep on preaching. And so, look at verse 33, when they heard that, they were caught to the heart. And they took counsel to, to the council to slay them. Not just one person, slay them. Get rid of this, stamp out this kind of religion. Then stood there up one in the council, a Pharisee named Gamaliel, a doctor of the law had a reputation among all the people and commanded to put the disciples apostles forth a little space then he spoke to them look at verse 38 in verse 38 and now i say unto you just one person going to control the direction in which they were thinking refrain from these men and let them alone for if this counsel or this work be of men, it will come to naught. Don't trouble yourself. It will fizzle away. But in verse 39, if it be of God, ye cannot overthrow it, lest haply ye be found even to fight against God. And to him they agreed. And to him they agreed. The power, the effect, the effectiveness of just one person.
turning the minds of the people in the right direction acts chapter 9 reading from verse 11 acts chapter 9 verse 11 and the lord said unto him arise and go to the street which is called straight and inquire in the house of judas for tell me one called saul and there was somebody hidden away somewhere a persecutor an injurious person a blasphemer a nuisance to the whole church a destroyer of the church of the living god one person and it's god's authority to go to damascus scatter all of them imprison those they can imprison and now the lord said arise ananias go into the street which is called straight and inquire in the house of judas for one called Saul of Tarsus. For behold, he prays. And he has seen the vision of a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hand on him, that he might receive a sight. Then Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard by many of this man how much evil he has done to thy saints at jerusalem look up here please you know if we go by the flesh and we go by what we know naturally we will not do what the lord wants us to do let's say for example there is somebody we know in our nation and he looks like a soul is troubled the church is scattered the church is destroyed the church one way or the other we want to invite him to come to bagada and everybody knows you don't have to read the newspapers you don't have to listen to the radio you don't have to look at the media everybody knows this person and then eventually maybe somebody invited him and he comes to Bagada. Maybe he just wants to see the building. They say that sure, there's a building like that, and then that church constructed road, and he wants uh, to come. And then you came to church, and you find such a person. You say what? Injurious soul, blasphemous soul. What? What's happening to deeper life? What's this man finding there? and they might even now call him to come and say hello to the church the end has come it's a new beginning i said it's a new beginning if such a thing happens we should excitedly joyfully cheerfully welcome such a soul who knows he might even do more than Peter tomorrow. I'm not hearing the church. Yeah. And so it is not ours to say, what's Saul looking, looking for there? Why are they inviting Saul? But you see here, even though Ananas complained and said, I've heard about this man. He even came to this city, Damascus, to do something terrible. Look at verse 14. In verse 14, and here he has authority from the chief priest to bind all that call on thy name. But the Lord said unto him, Go thy way. He is a chosen vessel unto me. You don't say amen to that? Yeah. To bear my name before the Gentiles and the kings and the children of Israel. You see, one person can turn a whole city around, a whole state around, a whole nation around, just one. And if you have the privilege, if God gives you the opportunity to go to that one person, reach him, talk to him, invite him, 
let him see the possibility of coming to christ and when he comes others will follow Amen. colossians chapter 4 i'm reading from verse 12 colossians chapter 4 verse 12 epaphras who is one of you just one just one epaphras who is one of you a servant of christ salutes you always laboring fervently for you in prayers that ye may stand perfect and complete in all the will of god i pray that that prayer will be fulfilled in all of our lives in jesus name tonight as i said i'm looking at the message the extraordinary power of one just one the three things the three parts were divided the message to number one the exalted ministry of turning one contact to christ one person you can contact one associate one member of your family a friend a co-tenant a co-worker a schoolmate a helper somebody who repairs either your machine or computer or whatever or your car or even a stranger but just one person reaching that person the exalted ministry of turning one convert to christ point number two the exemplary model of transforming one convert in christ now is a convert and you have the model of transforming that convert just one convert transforming him in the power of christ number three the exponential multiplication through training one conqueror for the great commission the exponential multiplication through training one conqueror for the great commission point number one tell me number one when you make up your mind to talk you tell me number one the exalted ministry of turning one convert to christ let's come to john chapter one reading from verse 40 john chapter 1 verse 40 one of the two which heard john speak followed him and followed him was andrew simon peter's brother and this one this andrew first finds his own brother simon and said unto him were found the messiah which is being interpreted the Christ and he Andrew brought him Peter to Christ to Jesus and when Jesus beheld him he said thou art Simon the son of Jonah thou shalt be called Savas which is by interpretation a stone Do you see there one person bringing a relative a relation bringing a friend bringing an associate bringing a playmate bringing an old acquaintance bringing somebody well known to him and you know what peter became eventually do it and there's no one that doesn't have a friend we're not so isolated we don't have friends co-tenants and we don't have associates we don't have acquaintances we have them co-workers talk to one and speak confidently and bring them to the lord luke chapter 5 reading from verse 27 luke chapter 5 verse 27 and after these things he went forth and saw a publican just one publican named 
Levi, sitting at the receipt of custom. And he said unto him, tell me out aloud, follow me. Just one convert, one contact. He saw him by the roadside at the receipt of custom. And then he said, follow me. And he left all, rose up, and followed him. He became a convert. But look at what follows, verse 29, and Levi, just that one that was brought to Christ, just that one that turned away from the old life and came to the new life, just that one immediately he came to Christ he made him a great feast in his own house and there was a great company a great company just not just a few of um, publicans and of others that such with them why for statute I came not to call the righteous who did he come to call I said, who did he come to call? Sinners to repentance. Notorious sinners. Terrible sinners. Public sinners. Well-known sinners. And so, when people are invited, and they are sinners, and they come, the reason is so that the grace of the Lord and the power of the Savior will reach them. And as we invite all the sinners, and you bring one, just one, that one person be bring a lot with him or with her. Many will come to know the Lord in Jesus' name. Amen. Luke chapter 8, verse 38. Luke chapter 8, reading from verse 38. Now the man out of whom the devils were departed besought him that he might be with him. But Jesus sent him away saying, stop there for a moment. This is a person that had a legion of evil spirits, thousands of them, tormenting him, oppressing him. This one person came to Christ and Christ set him free the Lord has established Bagada for a purpose Amen. looks like you are cold tonight yeah. there's a great wind of revival blowing already yeah. souls are getting saved yeah. the sick are getting healed and people that have occultic torments, occultic powers, they're being delivered already. And this is just the beginning, the foundation. But you understand, this man that had this terrible evil spirit tormenting him, now was delivered by Christ. Just one person, look at verse 39. Return to thine house and show how great things God has done unto thee. A new convert, a newly redeemed person, a newly restored person, a newly delivered person. And he, just one person, went his way and published, tell me, are you there? Tell me now. Throughout the whole city, I'm asking you now, if this man had opportunity to use email, if this man had opportunity to use book text, if this man had opportunity to use the social media, how much would he have done? But without social media, which we have today, without telephone, which we have today, and without email facilities, which we have today, look at the man, throughout the whole city, he told how great things Jesus had done unto him. Remember, the people of that area, they drove Jesus away. They said, we don't want to see you. 
because all the swine all the pigs are destroyed but because of the ministry the outreach of just this one man look at what followed in verse 40 and it came to pass that when jesus was returned the people gladly received him for they were all waiting for him because of one person one person that's why we're seeing the ministry the outreach that goes and reaches just one person is so important that we need to pick it up afresh and we need to dedicate ourselves to that afresh we will do it in jesus name acts chapter 11 acts chapter 11 i'm reading from verse 14 acts chapter 11 we're reading from verse 14 who shall tell thee words whereby thou and all thy house shall be saved here was an angel talking to cornelius one man and this one man was to send for one man peter and peter was to come and declare unto him words whereby cornelius just one person will be saved and all his house we read from verse 21 in verse 21 and the hand of the lord was with them and a great number believed and turned unto the lord that's another indication another person going out and just one person moving out and many people turn to the lord. look at verse 24 for he was a good man and full of the holy ghost and of faith and much people was added unto the lord just one person ministering and doing what needs be done and multitudes came to the lord we're coming to acts chapter 16 the statue acts chapter 16 reading from verse 30 it tells us in verse 30 and he brought them out and said sirs what must i do to be saved this is just one person the philippian jailer this is just one person the head of the prison in philippi this is just one person and he had done a treasure six they had laid stripes on paul and silas and now this philippian jailer as he brought them out he asked them question would you be interested in answering this question we shouldn't be here in the prison we should be out there having a great crusade we should be ministering to thousands and thousands of people and here they put us in the dungeon and this one single fellow is asking us a question what must i do to be saved well you want to hear let us come out of this place and then we're going to have a crusade and that crusade will tell you so pay attention and when you hear about the crusade no this just one person they concentrated all their efforts is a great opportunity don't miss that opportunity look at verse 31 and they said believe on the lord jesus christ and thou shalt be saved and what and thy house the conversion of one person can lead to the conversion of the whole family of the whole household and of the whole community and they speak unto him one person the word of the lord and to all that were in his house remember they should have been in the prison but this one person took them out and then took them to his house in the night and all of them heard the word and it says and it took them the same hour of the night and washed their stripes and was baptized he and all his straight way look at verse 34 and when he had brought them into his house he set meat before them and rejoiced believing in god tell me with all his house that's the effect of the ministry of just one person 
ministering to another person bring the one next to you and i bring the one next to me in no time at all will win them all so bring them win them one by one acts of the apostles chapter 8 in acts chapter 8 verse 26 acts chapter 8 verse 26 and the angel of the lord spake unto philip saying arise go to watch the south unto the way that goes down from jerusalem unto gaza which is desert understand philip the evangelist was in a great revival in samaria and the angel of the lord said leave that place and go to the desert area and he arose and went and behold a man of ethiopia a eunuch of great authority under candace queen of the ethiopians who had the charge of all her treasure look at how important the person was at the charge of all the treasures of the queen and had come to jerusalem for to worship and was returning and sitting in his chariot rage desires the prophet then the spirit of the lord said unto tell me unto philip go near and join thyself to this chariot that was the uh, instrument or the uh, method of movement at that time there was no car it was the country they will say enter the taxi enter the car there's somebody there that needs to hear the gospel just one person or you go into the plane there's one person there reach out to that person or you reach into or you're in the train reach out to that one person the spirit of god said go near join thyself to this chariot and philip ran see the to him and heard him reach the prophet Isaiah and said understandest thou what thou readest from there look at verse 35 then philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto him jesus so you see the ministry of reaching just one person and the lord is still looking for one person today that will be faithful that as you contact people as you see people you will not say it's not important i'm waiting when i get to my house fellowship and those people gather i'll share with them reach out to that person that you find on the street you find in the community just one ezekiel chapter 22 in ezekiel chapter 22 i'm reading from verse 30 ezekiel chapter 22 verse 30 and i sought for a man among them just one just one and the lord is seeking for you today and the lord wants you to take this word this gospel and take it to just another person it says i sought for a man among them that should make up the edge and stand in the gap before me for the land one person for the old land that i should not destroy it but i found none i pray we'll find you Amen. jeremiah chapter 5 reading from verse 1 jeremiah chapter 5 or reading from verse 1 it says run ye to and fro through the streets of jerusalem and see now and know and seek in the broad places thereof if there can be found a man just one man just one man the lord is depending upon you you're a believer you're a child of god you know the gospel you know the good news and you know that people are perishing and you don't have to wait for a crowd just you a sister just you a brother it says if you can see if you can find a man if there be any that executes judgment that seeketh the truth 
and I will pardon it. I will pardon the whole land. When God was looking for somebody in Israel, he found David. He will find you. I said he will find you. And you will be useful in the hand of the Lord in Jesus' name. Acts chapter 13. Reading from verse 22. Acts 13, verse 22. And when he had removed him, removed Saul, he raised up unto them David to be their king, to whom also he gave testimony and said, I have found David. Just one man. Just one man. Just one man. Be that man. Be that woman. Be the brother. Be the sister that God can depend upon and you're not waiting until you can reach a crowd touch another life the one next to you reach another person the one who has not had the gospel be passionate about it be excited about it it's a great opportunity and from there something will happen that will touch another person another community another region another state another nation it says i found david the son of jesse a man after my own heart which shall fulfill all my will we all have contacts we can turn them to christ you have a friend talk to him a relation talk to her a good tenant reach them with the gospel a fellow worker a schoolmate a helper even a stranger none of us is so isolated and lonely that we don't have an acquaintance we can talk to and andrew talks to peter if philip talks to nathaniel and ananias reaches out to saul Peter communicates with Cornelius though they had never met someone brought David to Saul the king he made a serious declaration led Naaman to the prophet and Philip the evangelist entered the chariot and preached Christ to a total stranger it's an exalted ministry exemplified by christ inspired by the holy spirit we must not lose any opportunity we naturally converse with people we talk to people only we don't talk about the most important subject but now turn around be friendly and those even are familiar those who are familiar and they're not so familiar people include the gospel in your daily conversation with everyone and with anyone preach the word reach the tract to the people or give a book a christian book to somebody testify share a message seek to save the lost be like christ what did Christ say he came to do? Look at Luke chapter 19, reading from verse 10. Luke chapter 19, I'm reading here from verse 10. And he wants us to have the same mind of Christ. He wants us to have the same drive of Christ and the same zeal for sharing the gospel. Luke chapter 19, verse 10. For the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost i pray that that same zeal will pass on to you the same excitement of reaching people for christ one by one you'll possess it in jesus name point number two now the exemplary model of transforming one convert in christ somebody has become converted from a contact he has become a convert god has used you you are spoken to him you have reached out to her you have brought her out of her sin to the savior and now that convert would need 
the touch of the Lord, the transforming power of the Lord, so that she will remain, he would remain constant in Christ. Christ has given us a model, the model of transforming a convert to a conqueror, the model of transforming a sinner to a sage, the model of transforming a fisher of a fisherman to a fisher of men. As we look at the model of Jesus, let's come to John chapter 1, verse 42. John chapter 1, verse 42. And he brought him to Jesus. We've read that before. That's talking about Andrew bringing up Peter to Christ. Bringing Peter out of darkness to the light. Bringing Peter to the revelation that we have seen the Messiah. The one that Moses wrote about. The savior of the world. He brought him to Jesus. And when Jesus beheld him, he said, Thou art Simon, the son of Jonah. Thou, tell me the next thing there. Thou tell me, thou tell me out aloud, shall be called, see, but shall be called. The Lord was looking to the future. It was not like that at that time, but shall be, because the Lord was going to transform him. And we're going to look at the method of Jesus so that that contact that became a convert. How are you going to relate with him? How are you going to relate with her? What are you going to do? How do you transform her life? How do you transform his life so that he will not remain a babe forever? He will not remain ignorant forever. He will not remain weak forever. But there is a transformation as we are going to turn the contact to the convert and then to the conqueror. It will happen in Jesus' name. Uh, let us follow through this. Matthew chapter 4. I'm reading from verse 19. Matthew chapter 4. We're reading from verse 19. And he said unto them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Underline that word, make. I will make you. I will make you fishers of men. That means the Lord was going to start now the process of transformation. The process that brings the man from the low level to the higher level. But you see the method of Jesus Christ was very different from that of the Pharisees. Look at what the Pharisees did. They also tried to make their own converts something you know look at matthew chapter 23 verse 15 matthew chapter 53 chapter 23 23 verse 15 one to you scribes and pharisees hypocrites for ye compass sea and land to make one proselyte that is one convert into their religion and when he is made ye make him he said, what, he said, what make? He make him to forge more the child of hell than yourselves. What did he do? How did the Pharisees do their own? Come to verse 25. One to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. For ye make, that's the word make, ye make clean the outside of the cup. And of the platter but within they are full of extortion and excess you see the pharisees all they did was to change the external don't wear this don't put on this don't paint this don't pump this don't burn this outward external don't make your dress like this make it like this external observe the sabbath day observe the feast day external 
That's how they made their own converse to line up with their own tradition. But Jesus Christ was different. Look at verse 28. Even so, he also outwardly appeared righteous unto men, but within are full of hypocrisy and iniquity. What they did was just to teach the people uh, some traditional statements, dogma, they can parrot. And those uh, converts can parrot, can repeat the tenets of their traditional religion. But in the case of Jesus, when he said, I will make you to become fishers of men, he started from the inside. The Pharisees started their own from the outside. Dressing, not painting, not using this, not using that. Observing this, observing that other one. But Jesus at a better approach and it is that same approach is giving us as we transform the converts in Christ and they become conquerors where does it start it starts on the inside John chapter 8 reading from verse 11 John chapter 8 reading from verse 11 she said no man lord and jesus said unto her neither do i condemn thee tell me go and sin no more it started from the inside change the heart turn the heart around let there be a new life look at verse 12 then speak jesus again unto them saying i am the light of the world he that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. That's how Jesus transforms people. It transforms the life of the convert from the inside. The convert had grace and godliness, the convert of Jesus. Because everything the convert was to do now, it was not to be by, you know, the Pharisaic kind of a training. Didn't it water, you don't wear this? Didn't it water, don't uh, put on lipsticks? Didn't it water, don't uh, do this? But grace, the, Christ introduced them to grace because he was full of grace and was full of godliness. And then regeneration and righteousness, regeneration within, salvation within and total new life from within that then came out into righteousness so number one christ exposed those converts like peter i will make you introduce them to grace and godliness to regeneration and righteousness to forgiveness and freedom freedom from sin he took their guilt away. We show them the promises of God that will lead them to hold on to those promises so they know that all the sins they had confessed, the Lord had forgiven and the Lord has set them free. He gave them new birth and new behavior. Except a man be born again, Christ knew that. And when he said, follow me, it's not just going to glee them like that except a man be born again he cannot see the kingdom of god so he gave them the new birth and a new behavior he gave them assurance of sonship and adoption into the family of god and he gave them love for the savior and love for the scriptures he gave them cleansed hearts and clean lives that's how he did it and that's what the lord wants us to do introduce the people to the cleansing of their lives by the grace of god by the shed blood of the lamb as they pray and believe on the lord jesus christ a change happens new birth and new behavior look at john chapter 15 i'm reading from verse 3 john chapter 15 verse 3 now ye are clean through the word which are spoken unto you what's of faith what's of assurance 
what's that made them believe that all things are possible and that their lives could turn around their lives could be changed those words came to them and they were cleansed so the lord wants us to teach the converts enlighten the converts intercede for the converts pray with the converts strengthen the converts disciple them and develop those converts so that whatever temptation was coming to them they will overcome if you are overcoming they will overcome you will show them how god is helping you to overcome and they too they'll overcome in jesus name i will make you notice that word make you that's coming from him coming from his son he the savior he the lord he the redeemer was the one to make them we're looking at romans chapter 6 verse 18 romans chapter 6 verse 18 remember the word make being then made free from sin that's what christ did for his converts that's what christ did for those he called he made them free and christ is still the same today you cannot make them free from sin but you can introduce them to christ and show them christ and show them the power of the blood of the lamb that will make them free they will be free in jesus name being them made free from sin he became the servants of righteousness look at chapter 8 verse 2 read it from verse 1 romans chapter 8 from verse 1 there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in christ jesus who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit look at this for the law of the spirit of life in christ jesus has made me free you see when those converse when they pray and they look up to the lord and they're not just following the laws of a pharisee they're not following the laws of religion they go on their knees and they say lord i believe you died for me and the blood of jesus cleanses from all sin and they have real faith in that transforming blood it says the spirit of god the law of the spirit of life in christ jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death it will happen to them john chapter 12 this is the process and this is the power that jesus took each of his that's disciples through that he took peter through as well john chapter 12 i'm reading from verse 46 i am come a light into the world that whosoever believeth in me peter included whosoever believeth in me every convert of christ that came to christ should not abide in darkness and you will not abide in darkness either first john chapter 3 in first john chapter 3 here is a victory that those converts had here is the victory that those disciples of Jesus had. And this is how to follow up the converts. Make them to know the victory they will have in Christ. And the victory that Christ has provided for them. John chapter, 1 John chapter 3. I'm reading from verse 4. Whosoever committeth sin transgresseth also the law for sin is the transgression of the law that's exactly what jesus told those pharisees in john chapter 8 and he said you are servants of sin and the servant abideth not in the house forever and he said you are of your father the devil 
and the words of your the deeds of your father ye will do he was a murderer from the beginning and a liar and also the father of lies if peter was still like that belonging to satan he couldn't belong to christ but the lord had changed his life because he said i will make you and the lord is still doing the same thing today you know if those converts remain in sin they're not converts they are not born again they do not belong to the lord because whoever committed sin is the servant of sin look at verse 5 and ye know thank god i know i said thank god i know and ye know that he was manifested to take away our sins and in him is no sin verse 6 whosoever abides in him sinners not Peter remained in him, Philip remained in him, Nathaniel remained in him, Andrew remained in him, those compass, they remained in him, and whosoever abideth in him sinneth not, whosoever sinneth has not seen him, neither known him, little children, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. He that committed sin, somebody there tell me, of the devil. If Peter remained when Jesus said, I will make you, I'll make you free, I'll make you to have grace, I'll make you righteous, I'll make you to be a child of God, I'll make you a real convert. If they continued in sin, that will not be because the receiver of the devil he that committed sin is of the devil he changed them he touched them he turned them around for the devil sinned from the beginning for this purpose the son of god was manifested tell me that he might destroy the works of the devil whosoever is born of god was peter born of god I said was Peter born of God all those followers that followed uh, Jesus and he said they are mine I gave them your word and the world has hated them they belong to you they belong to me were they born again tell me tell me yes whosoever is born of God does not commit sin for his seed remaineth in him and he cannot sin because he's born of God in this the children of God are manifest and the children of the devil whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of God neither he that loveth not his brother but you see jesus christ touched their lives jesus christ turned them around and their lives became different the same thing we're to do with our converts the converts that have come to christ through us we show them that jesus is savior that jesus gives a victory that jesus sets them free and i'll break the yoke and the power of sin from their lives in jesus name hebrews hebrews chapter 2 in hebrews chapter 2 i'm reading from verse 9 hebrews chapter 2 reading from verse 9 it tells us here in hebrews chapter 2 verse 9 it says but we'll see jesus was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death crowned with glory and with honor that he by the grace of god should taste death for every man taste death for every man for it became him for whom are all things and by whom are all things in bringing many sons to glory that was the purpose of christ it's not just to say, okay follow me come to church follow me come to the temple follow me come to house fellowship follow me come to deeper life follow me and let's uh, move around and come and see miracle and come and see i uh, open the eyes of the blind he wants to bring them to glory 
and the same thing with her converts were to so touch their lives were to so reach out to them were to so teach them the word of god that there is transformation in their lives and then christ in his power christ in his grace will bring them to glory it bring you to glory it bring your converts to glory it bring the whole church to glory look at that verse 10 again for it became him for whom are all things and by whom are all things in bringing tell me many sons unto glory to make the captain of their salvation perfect through suffering chapter 7 hebrews chapter 7 reading from verse 25 hebrews chapter 7 verse 25 wherefore he is able also to save them to the uttermost able to place them to the uttermost able to set them free to the uttermost able to give them the victory to the uttermost is able to save them to the uttermost that come unto god by him seeing he ever live to make intercession for them you too you are making intercession for those converts you're praying for them you're praying with them you are helping them spiritually to be strong in the lord and to have conviction and to have backbone and let's uh, look at second corinthians chapter three second corinthians chapter three i'm reading from verse six second corinthians chapter three verse 6 remember follow me and i will make you fishers of men second corinthians chapter 3 verse 6 who also has made us able ministers of the new testament he has made us he has made us in the power of christ in the grace of christ and it is the goodness of christ is the sacrifice of christ on the cross of calvary he has made us acts of the apostles chapter 4 acts of the apostles chapter 4 we're reading from verse 13 acts chapter 4 verse 13 Acts of the Apostles chapter 4 verse 13 Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John You remember Peter? He denied the Lord weak, feeble, not having bad bone Could not carry through his conviction His consecration went to the winds when somebody challenged him But now but now Christ sought him out and Christ brought him back and Christ restored him and Christ interceded for him and Christ empowered him again and now boldness came our converse will be bold they will stand firm and they will not be feeble and shaken in Jesus name you know it is it's not a, it's not a, something good to have you know all the converts and members of the church the pay okay they are coming they're, but they're weak they're coming but you know they cannot resist temptation they're coming but they're not strong they're coming but they're not they're not firm they're coming but they don't have conviction no i will make you an image them and the power of christ transformed their lives and that's what he wants us to do pick just one convert concentrate on that one convert don't just beat about the bush you're reaching this you're reaching this you're touching that touch that single person reach that single person transform that single person until they have backbone they will stand in jesus name look at verse 13 now when they saw the boldness of peter and john and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men they marveled and they took knowledge of them that they had been with jesus took knowledge of those uh, converts of those disciples of those followers of christ they had been with jesus the world will take note of your converts that they have been with the Lord Jesus and a change had come upon their lives 
and transformation has come upon their lives and they are strong strong in their mind strong in their spirit strong in their soul and strong in their backbone and strong in their conviction in jesus name it is that strength of spirit it is that courage of spirit that makes us to know we're doing proper follow-up it is that strength and that courage in spirit that makes us to know that these converts they're not wishy-washy converts and they're not people that cannot stand they will stand against temptation they will stand against evil and they will stand against anything that wants to destroy them and turn them back to the world in jesus name they will continue with the lord i said they will continue with the lord look at luke chapter 22 luke chapter 22 i'm reading from verse 28 luke chapter 22 and we're reading from verse 28 it says in verse 28 ye are they which have continued with me in my temptations that's what jesus said about those disciples that's what he said about those he want to himself he said they have continued with him and our converts will continue i said our converts will continue uh, we're looking at John. We're looking at John chapter 8. It is the continuity of their faith and the continuity in the faith that actually matters because uh, that's it's only those who endure unto the end that will be saved. We're coming to John chapter 8 and I'm reading from verse 30 to verse 32. From verse 30, as he spake these words, many believed on him then said jesus to those jews which believed on him tell me tell me out aloud tell me confidently if ye continue in my word then are ye my disciples indeed they continued we will continue our converts will continue our members will continue and as they continue they will be strong in jesus name and ye shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free i know the truth i know the truth and the truth makes me free amen point number three the exponential multiplication through training one conqueror for the great commission we're going to pick out two of those followers of christ two of those disciples of christ peter on the one hand paul on the other hand how they were trained how they were developed how they were strengthened how they were molded how their lives became so strong that they became a conquerors for the great commission let's speak peter to start with we're coming to luke chapter 22 luke chapter 22 i'm reading from verse 31 luke chapter 22 and we're reading from verse 31 and the lord said simon simon behold satan has desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat but i have prayed for thee the lord is praying for you and you need to pray for your converts too that thy faith shall not fail and when thou art converted when thou art restored when you come back again you turn to the lord again and when you come back fully with all your heart all your soul all your mind strengthen thy brethren and then we come to mark chapter 16 you remember what happened to peter he denied the lord he backslid and now when jesus rose from the dead look at the instruction he gave through the angel mark chapter 16 verse 6 and he says unto them be not affrighted 
You see, Jesus of Nazareth, which was crucified, is risen. Our Lord is risen. Is not here. Behold the place where they laid him. But go your way and tell his disciples. Tell me what follows. Tell me out aloud. And Peter, that he goeth before you into Galilee, there shall you see him as he said unto you, The Lord will not give up on Peter. The Lord will not give up on the backslider. Because he had said, I will make you fishers of men. And now that Peter had retraced his steps, at backsliding, at denied him, when he rose from the dead, he was still seeking after him. Go tell my disciples and tell Peter. And the same thing when you have converts, sometimes they are down sometimes they're discouraged sometimes maybe they even sin and in that situation you're not so okay he's gone he's gone forget about him the lord will not forget about him and the lord will not forget about you and they will come back in jesus name john chapter 21 i'm reading from verse 15 john chapter 21 verse 15 so when he had died, Jesus says unto Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? And he says unto him, Yea, Lord, yes, Lord, that knowest that I love thee. He says unto him, Feed my lambs. He says to him again, the second time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? He says unto him, Yea, Lord, yes, Lord, that knowest that I love thee. He says unto him, Feed my sheep. He says unto him the third time, He'll not give up on him. He's strengthening him. He's making him to repeat his commitment and consecration. He's making him to confess his commitment and consecration so that it will be firm, unshakable. And so that when trials and temptations come later, he'll remember three times, three times I said, yes, Lord, I love thee. And then he said, feed my lambs and feed my sheep. In verse 17, and it says, uh, it says unto him, the third time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? Peter was grieved because he said unto him, the third time, lovest thou me? And he said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things, thou knowest that I love thee. And Jesus said unto him, somebody there, feed my sheep. Now let's come to Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2, the exponential multiplication through that one single life exponential multiplication through that single convert that became a conqueror that became a champion and that became a great apostle in the hands of the lord acts chapter 2 i read from verse 14 acts chapter 2 verse 14 here it says in verse 14 but peter standing up with the eleven lifted up his voice and said unto them ye men of judea and all ye that dwell at jerusalem be this known unto you hearken to my words you see how he spoke now confidently without any fear and he spoke with conviction because now the fulfillment of what Jesus said on that first day when he called him, I will make you, is now made. Look at the result. I'm reading from verse 37. In verse 37, now when they had this, they were preached in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of jesus for the remission forgiveness of your sins and you shall receive the gift of the holy ghost verse 41 
then they that gladly received this word were baptized and the same day there were added unto them tell me out aloud but three thousand so you know what we're talking about one convert don't give up on him one convert don't give up on her what they can do later after they are solidified after they are strengthened after their backbone can now stand firm and stand erect one single convert that person that you reach out to and you touch and you transform and you train what they can become how multitudes can come through them into the kingdom look at chapter 5 acts chapter 5 reading from verse 14 acts chapter 5 reading from verse 14 and believers what the more added to the lord multitudes 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 both of men and of women is so much that they brought forth the sick into the streets and laid them on beds and couches that at the least the shadow of who of peter passing by might overshadow some of them now if you if you write off uh, peter and you finalize and finish his story at the on the day when jesus was crucified at the time when he denied jesus christ all this you will not see but you keep on following up you keep on encouraging them you keep on counseling them you keep on lifting them up you will not give up on them until they become so strong multitudes will come through them to the kingdom in jesus name that the shadow of peter passing by might overshadow some of them and there came also a multitude out of the cities round about unto jerusalem bringing sick folks and and them which were vexed with unclean spirits and they were tell me healed everyone multitudes came through this apostle shaky at the beginning weak at the beginning feeble at the beginning but now i will make you even yourself you were weak in the past now you are going to be strong and you will do exploits for the lord in jesus name that's peter uh, let's look at paul acts chapter 9 acts chapter 9 i'm reading from verse 26 acts chapter 9 reading from verse 26 and when saul was come to jerusalem he said he tried he endeavored to join himself to the disciples but they were all afraid of him and believed not that he was a disciple what if somebody did not come to help him out at that time but look at verse 27 but Barnabas took him and brought him to the apostles and declared unto them how he had seen the Lord in the way and that he had spoken to him and how he had preached boldly at damascus in the name of jesus and he was with them coming in and going out at jerusalem it was because of barnabas coming helping him bringing him and associating him with the believers in in um, jerusalem eventually they accepted him and was going in and out from among them it says in verse 29 and he spoke boldly in the name of the lord jesus and disputed against the Grecians, but they went about to slay him which when the brethren knew they brought him down to caesarea and sent him forth to tarsus and it says in verse 31 then at the church's rest throughout all judea and galilee and samaria and they were edified walking in the fear of the lord and in the comfort of the holy ghost they were tell me 
multiplied multiplied eventually you know as you look at uh, that uh, verse uh, from uh, 29 to 30 you see he was now sent forth to Tarsus that's his hometown he was there but again uh, Barnabas will not leave him alone you are checking up on people are they out of town are they running away and they're running from persecution and you reach out to them if that man could be strengthened if that sister could be strengthened if we can build them up and bear them up and lift them up there's a lot they can do chapter 11 verse 25 chapter 11 we're looking at verse 25 it says then departed Barnabas to Tarsus for to seek Saul what if they left him alone isolated in his town because you know persecution rose up early for him but now Barnabas went after him in verse 26 and when he had found him he brought him unto Antioch he brought him unto Antioch and it came to pass that a whole year they assembled themselves with the church and taught much people and the disciples were called Christians first in Antioch Barnabas will not leave him alone chapter 12 I'm reading from verse 24 chapter 12 verse 24 but the word of God grew and multiplied and Barnabas and Saul returned from Jerusalem when they had fulfilled their ministry chapter 13 verse 1 now there were in the church that was at Antioch certain prophets and teachers and then it gives their names and as they ministered in verse 2 to the Lord and fasted the Holy Ghost said separate me Barnabas and Saul even the Holy Ghost affirmed the ministry of Barnabas to Saul and Saul in that at those early days needed a person like Barnabas lift him up build him up encourage him strengthen him develop him transform him until he became a great apostle separate me Barnabas and Saul for the work whereunto I have called them and when they had fasted and prayed and laid their hands on them they sent them away so they being sent forth by the Holy Ghost departed unto Seleucia and from thence they sailed to Cyprus and then we come to chapter 14 reading from verse 1 chapter 14 reading from verse 1 this Saul that became Paul verse 1 and it came to pass in Iconium that they went both together unto the synagogue of the Jews and so speak and so speak no fear in them no fear in you no fear in your converts train them transform them develop them so that they're no more babes all the time they not remain babes for the rest of their lives they will so speak and a great multitude both of the jews and also of the greeks believed look at verse 3 long time therefore abode they speaking boldly in the lord which gave testimony unto the word of his grace and granted signs and wonders to be done by their hands multitudes will come through you look at chapter 15 acts chapter 15 verses 30 and 31 acts chapter 15 verse 30 so when they're dismissed when they were dismissed they came to Antioch and when they had gathered the multitude together multitudes together they delivered the epistle which when they had read they rejoiced for the consolation they rejoiced for the consolation chapter 17 reading from verse 1 chapter 17 reading from verse 1 now when they had passed through and few police 
and Apollonia. They came to Thessalonica. There where was a synagogue of the Jews. And Paul, as his manner was, went in unto them, and three Sabbath days reasoned with them out of the scriptures, opening and alleging that Christ must needs have suffered and risen again from the dead and that this jesus whom i preach unto you is christ look at verse 4 and some of them believed and consulted with paul and silas and of the devout greeks a great tell me tell me a great multitude out of the chief women not a few you know what we're saying just reaching one person a person like peter multitudes can come after that just reaching one person a person like paul multitudes will come later peter was once a new convert and paul was once a new believer if they had been left to themselves peter would have remained a remorseful coward and if they had been led by themselves peter and paul could have been an isolated regretful luna that would just be long because nobody received him until barnabas came but each of them was loved each of them was accepted each of them was transformed each of them was empowered each of them became involved each of them became trained and they were equipped one by one and they were strengthened they became engaged in the work of the lord that's what we have to do to our converts love them accept them to start with the way they are but don't leave them like that teach them admonish them counsel them intercede for them pray with them transform them empower them show them the promises of god that god wants to give power he saves he sanctifies and he baptizes in the holy ghost take them out with you get them involved in evangelism engage them equip them strengthen them train them you see peter brought multitudes to christ's kingdom and uh, Paul the apostle eventually brought multitudes to Christ's kingdom I pray the Lord will do that through you Amen. you'll not be a helpless uh, soul winner ah uh, no amen then yeah. you'll not be a weak soul winner in Jesus name the Lord will strengthen you give you fire in your heart zeal in your soul and then you reach out so that all those converts you strengthen them in the lord in jesus name we're coming to romans chapter 15 romans chapter 15 i'm reading from verse 19 here is paul the apostle giving his testimony he says through mighty signs and wonders by the power of the spirit of god so that from jerusalem and round about unto illyricum i have fully preached the gospel of christ that's paul now that's you i said that's you what are we going to do to those converts you witness to people generally and then when you see somebody who's interested wake him up his spirit his soul get him up you witness in general but then you identify somebody who is uh, responding wake him up win him unto the lord win her unto the lord and then watch over that one person watch over that one combat watch over that one brother that one sister walk with them in the temptations of life walk with them in all the situations vicissitudes of life don't leave them alone walk let them walk by your side so that you are counseling them you are helping them walk on them walk on them you see this area of a weakness this area of deficiency and this area of feebleness walk on them and when you see them and you see the attorney back warn them warn them warn them of the danger of sliding back 
wait on them wait on them that is you wait on the lord on their behalf and you will to prepare them for heaven if we do all that you win them one by one not just winning them you watch over them not only watching over them you are walking with them through life not only on that you are walking on them on the areas of their weakness and you are warning them and you are waiting on the lord on their behalf and you will to prepare them for heaven that no matter what comes and what goes this comfort will be with me in heaven i say this comfort in front of me will be with me in heaven you'll be there they'll be there win them one by one and make sure you do every sin it takes that you develop them and you strengthen them and thank god they will become great evangelists and pastors and preachers even in the future in jesus name it will happen i said it will happen anybody available to make it happen anybody committed to make it happen anybody going to consecrate to make it happen let's rise up and talk to the lord in prayer today we're really going to pray we're really going to pray that god himself god himself will touch them will transform them and will help us to train them so that as we bring them to the lord and we're watching over them and we are praying for them interceding for them they will not be lost they will not be weak they will not faint they will not backslide they will keep on serving the lord open your mouth and talk to the lord talk to the lord if you really love those converts if you don't have any convert yet you tell the lord i want to have a convert i want to have a convert i don't want to be barren spiritually i don't want to be anemic and i don't want to be a uh, kind of uh, having no impact on any life i'm witnessing i'm witnessing i'm winning them i'm waking them up and i'm bringing them to the lord and they will stand they will stand they will stand you tell the lord identify those converts those you are brought to the lord identify those converts and help them to stand somebody help peter you can help your convert somebody help paul you can help your convert until they become so strong and they can bring multitudes unto the lord let the lord use you win them one by one train them transform them strengthen them too